Greetings, this is Success Go, and welcome to this week's episode of the Warships and World of Warships, where we look at a bit of the history, the hard statistics, modules, and gameplay of a selected ship every week. This week we'll be looking at the first tier 10 I've been able to get in the game. This would be the Des Moines. Actually, that's the wrong pronunciation. It's pronounced Des Moines, I think. If the people thought the Cleveland at tier 6 or the Atlanta at tier 7, which is the premium though, it could put so many shells down range, the Des Moines can do that every 5 seconds. This was achieved when the U.S. Navy's Bureau of Ordnance realized that the same principle is used in their 6-inch, their 15.2cm guns could be applied to the 8-inch, the 20.3cm guns, to triple the fire rate. This would overcome the 8 inches excessively slow fire rate by giving the guns autoloaders. The guns were considered to be mounted on the Oregon City class cruisers, but the decision was made to mount them onto a new ship with triple turrets. Initial features of the ship in question included a machinery arrangement similar to that of battleships and a separate bomb deck to provide protection against bombing. In mid-1943, four cruisers with the hull number CA-139, CA-140, CA-141, and CA-142 were ordered. In October, CA-143, which would later be the Des Moines, was added which made the ship count 5. At the same time, three of the proposed hull numbers from the Worcester class light cruisers were shifted to the heavy class design. This brought the numbers of ships to 8. In 1945, a program which would have added the numbers 150 to 153 was proposed, but this was denied by the president. Out of the eight, only three were completed. This would be the Des Moines, the Newport News, and the Salem. All three cruisers served during the post-war period, mostly present in naval exercises with various allied nations of the United States. The Salem was the first one decommissioned in January 1959, with the Des Moines following in July 1961. This would make the Newport News the last remaining ship of the class, and it was also the only ship that ever saw action when it provided fire support off Vietnam. The Newport News was decommissioned in July 1975 and is considered the last all-gun cruiser active in the U.S. Navy. There were plans and studies to see if the Des Moines and the Salem could be reactivated for Regan's 600 Navy plan, but there was not enough space on deck to fit modern weaponry and equipment needed to operate in the 1980s. The only remaining ship, as of date, is the Salem, which is now a museum ship. The other two were scrapped. The Newport News in 1993 and the Des Moines in 2007. Now going to the modules of the ship. Since the Des Moines is a tier 10, we're going to be skipping over the modules since for, well for this, it's what you get is what you get. For the upgrades, I always recommend getting first and foremost main battery modification 1, but it's up to you if you want to go to gun modification 1 or second battery modification 1. But going back to that, why I always choose main battery modification 1? It's because it decreases your chance of magazine detonation, decreases the chance of critical damage to your guns, and decreases your gun repair time if they're ever taken out. But of course, if they're permanently taken out, you can't repair that, because it's permanent. Second upgrade is AA Gun Modification 2, which increases the firing range for your anti-aircraft mounts. Useful because Des Moines is actually a very good anti-aircraft cruiser, but really it's also up to you if you just want to use this one over here or get more, be, have more accurate, if you whatever you want, to be honest. For the third salt, a gun modification 3, which of course increases your AA effectiveness by 20%. But it's also your choice if you want to have longer range, which in gun modification 2, which increases your range by 16%. I won't recommend any of the I won't recommend this because this is like pretty much a waste of time and this one just the the negative stats isn't really worth it. For this one, really optional if you want to put any of this in, put it in. For the 5th slot, steering gear modifications too, having a quicker rudder shift time is very useful for the ship. I mean, actually for a lot of ships, it's also pretty useful, so I always recommend this, like, if the ship has a really slow rudder shift time, but even if it has a fast one, I always just recommend it still. Now for the last slot, never get consumed system modification 1, because 1, how the heck would you hide in a cruiser? And 2, of course, get target acquisition system modification 1, because... That increases how far you can acquire targets, and that's really useful. Now moving along to the stats. The Des Moines has a hit point of 50,600, a firing range of 15.8 kilometers, a rate of fire of 10 rounds a minute, a 180 degree turn of 30 seconds, a max dispersion of 142 meters, 
a max HE damage of 2,800, a chance of fire of 14%, a max AP damage of 5,000, a max speed of 33 knots, a turning radius of 770 meters, and a rudder shift time of 11.2 seconds. Comparing the Des Moines with the Zhao, the Zhao has a hit point of 44,900, a firing range of 16.2 kilometers, a rate of fire of 4.9 rounds a minute, a 180 degree turret turn of 36 seconds, a max dispersion of 137 meters, a max HE damage of 3,300, a chance of fire of 18%, a max AP damage of 5,400, a max speed of 31 knots, a turning radius of 840 meters, and a rudder shift time of 10 seconds. Now what I didn't put in the stats is that the Zhao has torpedoes, since the Des Moines doesn't have torpedoes, I didn't really find the point in actually comparing the two. From a statistical standpoint, I'd say that both ships are even. While Des Moines actually has more hit points and a faster firing rate, along with better speed and a tighter turning radius, the Zhao outset uh, actually sort of like balances out by having torpedoes, that's the main thing, by having also a longer firing range a tighter shell dispersion, and the shell is actually doing more damage. I think that pretty much evens both ships out pretty nicely. So here's uh, me and some gameplay into Des Moines. Right now I'm just sticking near to my carriers because it's a nice way to dissuade uh, bombers, if any bombers appear, enemy bombers appear, to dissuade them from coming near you because you're there to provide some very, very heavy anti-aircraft support because that's what the Des Moines is actually really good at. It's a very good anti-aircraft platform. Just driving a bit away now since it looks like I should be able to cover them from here, but it doesn't look like the planes are actually coming. They look like they're going somewhere else right now. Are they going for that battleship over there? It looks like they are. Yeah, they're going for that battleship over there. Rip that guy. Unless, of course, he notices them. And from the looks of it, he actually noticed them. He's turning away from them now. Oh, yep, yep. He's going to be dodging that. Might hit one or torpedo. Yep, yeah, I think he actually hit eight one torpedo or something like that. Good job for him though to avoid those. He actually started moving out very early on. Very good job to him. But it looks like he's surrounded now by like other stuff like torpedo bombers and dive bombers. Dive bombers are going in right now doing their dive. They've dived. He's on fire. Torpedoes. Was that an auto drop? <laughs> that looked like an auto drop. He didn't even adjust it. He just go game in and now I'm just bending around really nice in my ship. And that's a destroyer in that cap circle over there. Can I hit him? I wonder if I can hit him. Yep, he's just appearing. Yep, he's appeared again. Looks he's staying put. And he's actually firing. That's a big mistake in the destroyer. You don't fire if you're in a smoke unless you really, really, really have to. But in that scenario, I wouldn't actually even bother firing because he's actually still... Actually would have still support of my teammates over there. Hmm. What else is going on right here? What else is a Des Moines? Well, a Des Moines... It has a 5 second reload or something like that. That's just a really, really fast reload. And the guns actually hurt pretty, actually hurt a lot because the because mostly because of the reload damage. You just output so much shells towards the target. I think this this uh, cruiser over here will be a little perfect example. I don't know why, but I'm actually slowing down right now. That was a bit. Why am I slowing down? I should speed up. But oh well. Uh, AP to the sides. Will that will those shells actually connect with him? Will those shells connect? Yep. We get a little hit towards him. Got more shells out there. And I'll keep. And I'm taking fire right now. I have no idea why I even slowed down. Uh, Keep firing, keep firing, keep firing. I don't want him to make it to the island. Please don't make it to the island. Come on, just keep firing. Ooh, there was a bounce over there. Alright, just keep firing, keep firing. Come on, we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you. Nope, 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 please don't make it to the island. Don't make it to the island. Uh, probably one shot. Just hit, hit, hit. Shells hit, hit, hit. And boom, right there. Notice how fast the rate of fire of the Des Moines was. That is really, really fast. The, just the sheer output of shells right there. Ouch, taking some fire from that battleship over there. Fought my repair crew. Uh, anyways, yeah, the Des Moines, as much as it has the rate of fire and it could handle uh, well, multiple ships, well, technically speaking, multiple smaller ships probably, or cruisers, not battleships. The Des Moines isn't... It requires a lot of somewhat maneuvering and patience. Like, don't overextend yourself to, a, to that you're alone because even with your rate of fire, it means nothing if you're surrounded by like a ton of ships that could just unleash like salvos onto you really fast or actually just like one salvo because all of them just released one salvo at you and you're just you're just dead you're melted but the rate of fire is really useful i'm just peppering that battleship at range with he just taking out whatever should actually be trying to shoot ap at him but eh. 
and I am turning right now. Okay, I should slow down. I think I'm gonna turn to that. Yeah, I am turning to that island. Why am I turning to that island? Slow down, slow down, slow down. But I think I should be safe from here from them. This island should provide some adequate cover. And there goes my warnings. Right, that battleship's still there. Hmm. It looks like I'm actually being ignored right here, and I'm just gonna cap B while while trying to fix my my ship's direction. Hmm. Oh wow, that carry over there's like barely in any health. How's he still alive? All right, I've capped B. Let's reverse a bit more. Try to fix my ship. Uh, wow, ship's still over there. So really, that carrier though is like one hit and he's just still there wow <laughs> amusing this off amuse no i'm really being ignored here it's really funny is that montana reversing it looks like he's reversing i don't know why he's reversing interesting ah some more shell hits is he still on fire though is he still on fire though and that Baltimore looks delicious. And that carrier is still alive. Why is he still alive? I don't understand. I'm confused. I'm scared. Why is he still alive? Oh, some hits on that guy. Really? Like, like triple digit health and he's still floating? Oh well. Anyways, I'm going to go try to the left side. Go try and capture point C. I think as far as I last checked, there's a cruiser and a destroyer there, but I'm not sure. So let's head in there because I'm totally reckless that way. Hmm. Battleship. Is that a Zumo? I'm not sure which direction that is Zumo is facing. I think he's facing me. Is he? Uh, I think not. I think not. Yeah, I think. No, wait, no. He is actually facing me, correction. In the minimap, he's actually facing me. Oh, that Mogami. Yummy. Ow, 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 ow. Critical damage. That AP penning me. That hurt. That was sad. Ow. Ow. Alright, so that Mogami is. Is he look? I wonder if he's looking at me, though. I should be on his minimap. I should be spotted right now. And that uh, ship's just ignoring me right now. Probably can, actually no, probably he can't see me. Probably once I appear, once I appear in front of him, I should appear. Oh no, he's actually he, the bash can see, still see me. Down to three thousand hit points. That hurts. Please, please, Mogami, don't be looking at me. Don't be looking at me. E is he looking at me? E yeah, yeah, yeah. He's looking at me. Oh, wait, no, he's not. He's not. Correction, he's not. He's not. Yes, yes. Take advantage. AP, AP, AP to Citadel. Ooh, Citadel hit! Get him another Citadel, get another Citadel hit, reload, reload, 5 seconds, reload, oh wait, there we go. Another one more, one more, just finish him off, just finish him off. Actually, is that Mugami or... I don't remember, man, it's too late for that. Oh, well, he's gone, he's gone. He couldn't even turn his turrets in time. Oh well, now as far as I know, there's still that Destroyer here. Is that Destroyer still here, though? Let's go look. Hmm, nope, yep, there's smoke there, that's pretty ominous. I'm gonna assume there are Shimakazes in that smoke. Yeah, it's just a Shimakaze left. Uh, hmm. It's not moving that fast. HE, salvo 1. Please connect. Yep, we got some connecting shots. 1,800 damage. He's firing at me. Please don't, don't, don't kill me. Ah, I'm on fire. No, no. Uh, Alright, there we go. Uh, repair crews just came back online. So let's, let's repair. Let's repair. Alright, he's on fire, so that's good. Everyone's actually shooting him now since he's lit. No one likes the destroyer. Kill the destroyer. No one likes you. Well, I like destroyers, and I never found any issues with destroyers, even when they say that it's going to be nerfed. But, yeah, I still love my destroyers a lot. I love my Kagero, I love my Fubuki, I love my Atuharu. I just don't like the Mutsuki that much, but, yeah, still good ships. Alright, we're probably going to take him out now. Where are his torpedoes? Did he, like, launch a salvo or something? Oh, no, I'm gone. There you go. Ow. Anyways, guys, this has been my gameplay and actually overview of the Des Moines. Hope you guys enjoyed this video of me playing really badly and being really lucky at the same time.
So what is what is for next week? Next week's uh, the the warships video, and I'm actually gonna shoot that island just because I want to. Uh, the next week's video will be the Katori. I'll be going over the Katori because the Katori is actually going to be going bye bye very soon. And open beta is coming this weekend apparently. So yeah, it's going to be a very very hectic weekend. Lots of I'm going to assume there's going to be a, there's going to be another apocalypse. So prepare your chats for that. Anyways, this has been Excess Go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm saying that again. Like, dislike, favorite comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. and a separate bomb deck to provide protection against bombing. In mid-1943, four cruisers with the hull number CA-139, CA-140, CA-141, and CA-142 were ordered. In October, CA-143, which would later be the Des Moines, was added, which made the ship count 5. At the same time, three of the proposed hull numbers from the Worcester-class light cruisers were shifted to the heavy-class design. This brought the numbers of ships to 8. In 1945, a program which would have added the numbers 150 to 153 was proposed, but this was denied by the president. Out of the 8, only 3 were completed. This would be the Des Moines, the Newport News, and the Salem. All 3 cruisers served during the post-war period, mostly present in naval exercises with various allied nations of the United States. The Salem was the first one decommissioned in January 1959 with the Des Moines following in July 1961. This would make the Newport News the last remaining ship of the class, and it was also the only ship that ever saw- Of course, if they're permanently taken out, you can't repair that, because it's permanent. Second upgrade is AA Gun Modification 2, which increases the firing range for your anti-aircraft mounts. Useful because Des Moines is actually a very good anti-aircraft cruiser, but really, it's also up to you if you just want to use this one over here or get more, be, have more accurate, if you, whatever you want, to be honest. For the third salt, a gun modification 3, which of course increases your AA effectiveness by 20%. But it's also your choice if you want to have longer range, which in, gun modification 2, which increases your range by 16%. I won't recommend any of the. I won't recommend this because this is like pretty much a waste of time, and this one just the the negative stats isn't really worth it. For this one, really optional. If you want to put any of this in, put it in. For the fifth slot, steering gear modifications to having a quicker rudder shift time is very useful for the ship. I mean, actually, for a lot of ships, it's also pretty useful. So I always recommend this. Like. If the ship has a really slow rudder shift time, but even if it has a fast one, I always just recommend it still. Now for the last slot, never get consumed system modification one because one, how the heck would you hide in a cruiser? And two, of course, get target acquisition system modification one because that increases how far you can acquire targets and that's really useful. Now moving along to the stats. The Des Moines has a hit point of 50,600, a firing range of 15.8 kilometers, a rate of fire of 10 rounds a minute, a 180 degree tur turn of 30 seconds, a max dispersion of 142 meters, a max HE damage of 2,800, a chance of fire of 14%, a max AP damage of 5,000, a max speed of 33 knots, a turning radius of 770 meters, and a rudder shift time of 11.2 seconds. Comparing the Des Moines with the Zhao, the Zhao has a hit point of 44,900, a firing range of 16.2 kilometers, a rate of fire of 4.9 rounds a minute, a 180 degree turret turn of 36 seconds, a max dispersion of 137 meters, a max HE damage of 3,300, a chance of fire of 18%, a max... Greetings, this is Excess Go, and welcome to this week's episode of the Warships and World of Warships, where we look at a bit of the history, the hard statistics, modules, and gameplay of a selected ship every week. This week we'll be looking at the first tier 10 I've been able to get in the game. This would be the Des Moines. Actually, that's the wrong pronunciation, it's pronounced Des Moines, I think. 
If the people thought the Cleveland at tier 6 or the Atlanta at tier 7, which is the premium though, it could put so many shells down range that the Moines can do that every 5 seconds. This was achieved when the US Navy's Bureau of Ordnance realized that the same principle is used in their 6 inch, their 15.2 centimeter guns, could be applied to the 8 inch, the 20.3 centimeter guns, to triple the fire rate. This would overcome the 8 inches excessively slow fire rate by giving the guns autoloaders. The guns were considered to be mounted on the Oregon City class cruisers, but the decision was made to mount them onto a new ship with triple turrets. Initial features of the ship in question included a machinery arrangement similar to that of battleship action when it provided fire support off Vietnam. The Newport News was decommissioned in July 1975 and is considered the last all-gun cruiser active in the U.S. Navy. There were plans and studies to see if the Des Moines and the Salem could be reactivated for Regan's 600 Navy plan, but there was not enough space on deck to fit modern weaponry and equipment needed to operate in the 1980s. The only remaining ship, as of date, is the Salem, which is now a museum ship. The other two were scrapped, the Newport News in 1993 and the Des Moines in 2007. Now going to the modules of the ship. Since the Des Moines is a tier 10, we're going to be skipping over the modules since for, well for this, it's what you get is what you get. For the upgrades, I always recommend getting first and foremost main battery modification 1, but it's up to you if you want to go to gun modification 1 or second battery modification 1. But going back to that, why I always choose main battery modification 1? It's because it decreases your chance of magazine detonation, decreases the chance of critical damage to your guns, and decreases your gun repair time if they're ever taken out. 